In this video, we're going to take a look at the top 25 tips and tricks for working with Microsoft Teams. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future videos like this one. Now, let's get started. In this tip, we're going to see how we can allow guest users into our Microsoft Teams. So this is a feature that we need to enable first. So we need to head to our Microsoft 365 Admin Center and we can go to show all and open up our Teams Admin Center. Now in Teams Admin Center, we need to head over to org wide settings and there's a section here for guest access. And then we just need to enable this option here, allow guests in Teams. So set that to on and this might need a few hours to propagate before you're actually able to invite guest users to your Teams. But after a couple hours, you should be able to, in your Teams, invite guest users. So if you go to a team and click on the ellipses and add a member, then you can add any user by their email address. Now this is going to allow you to add any email address so it doesn't have to be a Microsoft account. So you can add Gmail accounts or any other type of email address and then you're going to be able to add them as a guest. Let's add this person and in the Microsoft Teams they're going to appear as their email address handle and with the guest tag. If you've been invited to someone's team as a guest user, then you don't actually need to install Microsoft Teams to use Microsoft Teams. You can use the web app instead. So if you're invited, you should get an email that looks like this and you can open Microsoft Teams. And that should open up a tab in your web browser. And you'll probably see this pop up notification and most people are going to click open Microsoft Teams. Now that's going to open up your desktop application if you have it or prompt you to download it if you don't. So instead what you can do is hit cancel and use the web app instead. And then you can use Microsoft Teams as a guest user without installing the desktop application. Keyboard shortcuts can speed up your work in just about any application and Teams is no exception. So in this tip, we're going to take a look at the first keyboard shortcut you should learn, which is control period. And this shortcut is actually going to bring up this menu of keyboard shortcuts available in Microsoft Teams. So here we can see a list of all the available shortcuts and there's quite a few and quite a few useful ones as well. So again, that's control period to open up this keyboard shortcuts menu and you can start learning all the available keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Teams. In this tip, we're going to take a look at bookmarking messages. So you can bookmark a message to find it easily later on. So you can go up to the three ellipse tab on the message and save this message. And then to find a message later on, just head up to the search bar and type slash saved. And that's going to list out all your saved messages in Microsoft Teams so that you can easily find them later on. We can mark any message as unread in Microsoft Teams. So if we go up to our message and go to the three ellipse menu, we can mark our message as unread. Now our channel is in bold to indicate that we've got an unread message there. And we can see all our unread messages by going up to the search bar and typing unread. And that'll list out all the unread messages we have in our channel. We can add rich text formatting to our messages. So if we start writing a message, there's an icon down here to format our message. Now we can even add a subject line. And then we can add formatting to our message like bold text or underlining, etc. As well as things like bullet points 
or numbered lists. And that way we can make our message more organized with some rich text formatting. If you work in a multilingual company, then this tip is going to be very handy. So you can actually translate any message in Microsoft Teams pretty easily. First, you're going to need to enable this feature. So in the Teams Admin Center, you need to head to Messaging Policies. And we either need to create a new policy or edit an existing one. Let's edit this existing one. And in here, we just need to set this setting here, translate messages. We need to set that to be on. And then we also need to give Teams a little bit of time to propagate this new setting. And back in Teams then, if you have a message here that's in a different language, you can go up to the ellipse menu and select translate here. And then it's gonna translate that message into your local language setting. The search bar in Microsoft Teams is a very handy feature, but it's also a command center as well. So if you type forward slash in the search bar, then that's gonna list out all the available commands that you can use from this command center. So for example, here we can set our status to do not disturb. Let's try that one out. And our status is now set to do not disturb. If you want to get someone's attention, then make sure you at mention them in your message and that way they'll get notified of the new message. So we just need to type an at symbol and then followed by their name. We can also use this at mention with channels or teams. So again, just at, and if we type out the name of the channel, then we can use that. And we can also at mention teams. So here's our team tips. And that way people will get a notification about the message. This next tip will allow us to email our Microsoft Teams. So we can create an email address for any team or a channel in a team. If we go to the team or a channel, then we can use this three dot ellipse menu and get an email address for that team or channel. Let's copy our email address and head over to our email and send an email with this. Let's go back to Teams. And here's the email we just sent. Here's a couple tips for organizing your teams. So you can actually rearrange the order here by clicking and dragging your teams around. And if your teams also have a lot of channels, you might not be interested in them all. You can actually hide some of your channels. So if you select a channel and go to the three ellipse menu, then you can hide the channel. And any channels you hide are gonna end up in this hidden channel section here. And you can access them from that menu. And this will just keep them out of the way from your more important channels. Microsoft Teams has an immersive reading feature that you can use for any messages. So for any message, just go up to the three ellipse menu and select immersive reader from the options there. That's going to open up the message in an immersive reading mode. And here we just have only the message. Now we can play our message here. John McDougall at Tuesday. And have Microsoft Teams read us the message. And we also have various options here to change things like the font and some grammar options here and other reading focus options. So that's the immersive reading feature which is going to allow us to focus on just the message in a more readable format. 
So Microsoft has an option that will allow you to blur out your background in a team meeting. So we can enable that option here before we join our team meeting and then come here and select a variety of different backgrounds or just a blurred background or one of these predefined backgrounds. And then we can join our meeting with that background enabled. Now, of course, if you don't enable that at the start, you can always come to the options here and enable the background with this show background effects menu. And of course, my favorite trick is that you can make yourself disappear. So Teams has file storing capabilities. Every channel actually comes with a file tab where you can place files that you can share in the channel. So you can upload files here and anyone in the channel will be able to access them. Now these aren't actually stored in Teams. Behind the scene, this is all SharePoint, so we can open up where these are in SharePoint and access those files there as well. So this is a great option for collaborating on files and not needing to leave Teams to do that. Each channel in Microsoft Teams comes with these three default tabs here, but we can also add our own custom tab to the menu here. So that's going to allow us to turn our favorite apps and files into tabs on the top of the channel. So here, let's maybe add a website. And I'm gonna add my website. And let's just call this tab home and save that. And so now here's a tab that just displays my website. Navigating around Microsoft Teams can sometimes mean a lot of clicking around to get to where you need to go, but Teams actually does have a back and forward navigation to help with that. So up here in the corner, it's a little bit small, but we do have a back navigation button and that'll take you to the last screen that you were at, as well as a forward navigation button so that you can go forward to the screen you just came from. If you really need to get someone's attention in a Microsoft Teams chat, then there's an option here to change the urgency. So we have standard and we can also mark things as important, but there's an urgent option here where the recipient will receive a notification every two minutes for the next 20 minutes. So this is definitely something you wanna use sparingly but it's available if you really need it. The best way to keep on track of everything in Teams is to use the Activity Center. So this is a activity feed of all your notifications and activities. So there's a couple different options. You can look at a feed or you can look at just your own activity. And there's also filtering options. So you can filter with text here to try and search for particular activities. But there's a really great option here that also allows you to search by type of activity. So you can uh, search for your unread messages, mentions, replies, or even reactions, etc. So you might remember that an important message had a reaction on it, but you don't remember anything in the message that would allow you to search meaningfully by text. And that will make it a little bit easier to find those types of messages. So the Activity Center is a great way to keep on top of all your activity in Teams and search for past activity as well. You can quickly turn any chat into a team meeting with the options up here in the top right corner. So we have the option to turn our chat into a video call, an audio call, or we can also share our screen easily with these options up here. And that's going to set up a team meeting for us and call all the participants in the chat. Team meetings are one of the flagship features in Microsoft Teams and the best features in team meetings are that you can record your meeting. So you can start recording your meeting at any time and you can also share your screen with others. So there's options here to share your entire screen and anything on that screen or you can just share particular windows so that a team member can only see that window and won't accidentally see anything else. When you record a team meeting, you can actually have the video transcribed automatically. 
So when the video becomes available, you can click on the more options and open the video in Microsoft Stream, which is where the video is stored. And from here, you can access the options and edit the video. So update video details. And then we just need to select the video language. So my video is in English. And then we can auto generate the captions for the video. So we just need to make sure this option is checked off here. And then let's apply those changes. And once we've done that, then we can go to the view settings here and show our transcript. And when they're ready, they'll be available here. You can easily access your most frequented channels by pinning them to the top of your team's list. So for any channel, you can go to the options and pin the channel. And that will pin it to the top of your Microsoft Teams so that it's easily accessible from there. One of the best things about Microsoft Teams is that you can add additional functionality by installing apps. So you can install Microsoft apps and other third-party apps for additional functionality. So here I've got Microsoft Planner installed. And you can see that in the menu pane here. But if I navigate to something else in Teams, then that's going to disappear from the navigation menu. But we can actually pin our apps to our navigation menu. So if we right click on the app, then we can pin it. And that way, when we navigate away, it'll still be available there in the navigation menu. For any team, we can create custom at mention handles. So this is going to allow us to notify various groups of people. So for example, maybe we only want to notify managers, or maybe we only want to notify customer service representatives in a channel. Then we can create a custom tag for them and then use that custom tag as an at mention. So in any team, we can go to the options and manage our tags. And we can create a tag and give it a name. So let's call this one managers. And then we can add people to that tag. So let's just add me and let's create that. And now with that tag in that channel, we can use it as an app mentioned to notify the people in that tag. So here's our app managers tag. And we can use that just like any other app mentioned now. Microsoft Teams has a fairly extensive help menu that's worth checking out. So you can access that either from the command bar up here with the forward slash help command, or we can access it from this three dots menu help or down here. The help menu is just always available. And however you get there, it'll bring you to this help menu here. So we have topics, training, and what's new. So topics gives us some links to some useful resources. And we also have Teams training. So we have some videos here for training on Teams. And we can also find out about the latest new features in Microsoft Teams. So there we go. There's the top 25 tips and tricks for getting the most out of Microsoft Teams. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.